Thank you very much. I'd like to start by managing expectations. We had just about 20 minutes in the morning, but I think um, Javier from Spain, uh, Judy from Lebanon, uh, Dase from Lithuania, was it? Latvia. Uh, we're really great uh, people to work with on this. Our subject was the media, and we really agreed pretty much at the beginning that the problem needs to be reframed because we've been thinking of media a lot in the last 50 or so years as a freedom of speech issue, as, an, as, an, as a matter of an access to information. But more so than that, it is a discursive space where people are forming opinions that are politically relevant. And so that space is, has a structure that is evolving and looking at that structure and how we can positively influence it has been the core approach of this group. And so when we look at the structure, we're looking at traditional media and especially broadcasters that play a major role both south of the Mediterranean and in Europe. Uh, but of course we have the emergence of new technologies that are very, very important. And here what we need to bear in mind is that these are private businesses that play an outsized role in the public opinion formation process. There's a scholar from Britain called Timothy Garton Ash who called them POPs, publicly, uh, privately owned public spaces. It's a major problem. We haven't faced this in such a manner before because they have a private mandate. They work in a market environment trying to maximize their profit and yet they have a major role in the public opinion formation process. So we really have to think of this in, in a new way. And then Javier had a very, very good point about video game companies and the fact that I believe it's uh, just under half of the population in, uh, in, the, in the geographical area of our concern play video games on a regular basis. So here you have a new tool, a new outlet that plays a major role in the formation of public opinion that shapes perceptions that is part of the equation and yet it's not part of our approaches. So it's very, very important to look at these stakeholders uh, and bring them on board, to which I'll come in just a second. Uh, we talked, when we, when we spoke about video games, we talked briefly, Javier, again, your example of Jihadi John being modeled after a video game character and therefore, you know, inspiring a real life person, a real life uh, terrorist. Uh, all of these are new phenomena that we, know, we need to think of differently. Um, and so media platforms, more broadly, we recognize as one of the major issues, are not designed to foster constructive conversation. There are ways in which you know, hundreds of millions of people now have access to the public sphere, but that doesn't necessarily mean that people are engaging more constructively. So we do have a, a, a major challenge that we're facing in that regard. Um, because what we ultimately are trying to do is to build positive bridges uh, and help people uh, you know, develop values of culture and uh, respect and tolerance and acceptance as well. Uh, we spoke briefly about the high prevalence of fact denial in public discourse that has been uh, you know, a, a big issue in the Arab world, but also is becoming increasingly an issue in Europe. And so in this new environment, we really need to think of it as a new challenge. And I, and I think that's very, very important. And then lastly, we identified as an issue the lack of inclusion of vast parts of the population from the public discourse. So you're, run, you're, you're operating a public discourse that largely excludes uh, you know, youth, women, marginalized communities, especially in the Arab world, but I think very much so in Europe as well. So, so these are some of the issues that we identified. And then we looked at means that, uh, through which we could target some of these problems. Uh, we do believe that whatever initiative we look at has to be an organic initiative. It cannot look as something that is imposed by an international organization. Uh, and then it does need to work on popular culture. It needs to look at some of the themes that millennials are being influenced by uh, and use those positively. Um, we discussed briefly the possibility of the creation of a forum for constructive exchange. So here, uh, the answer is not simply Facebook or Twitter because again, these media are not designed to foster exchange because that is not their mandate. They don't have a democratic mandate. And so I think it's very important to think of ways we can conceive fora that are designed to do just that. 
Uh, and then a certain solution orientedness is also very important that isn't inherent to, to social media, where we look at challenges that are of common or major concern, but also agree to have conversations for the sake of finding solutions, more so than having conversations for the sake of conversation. We mapped a couple of the partners that could be part of the solution. Uh, and if you look at the digital space, we can talk all we want about the internet and social media. If we don't get Silicon Valley, uh, Facebook, Twitter, Google, all of these pops on board in this process, it's not going to be a complete process. It is imperative that we bring these partners on board. And I know from my conversations with Google and Facebook and Twitter that there's a great interest, but what we need probably is an organization with the convening power, such as UNESCO, to bring these different partners together. We spoke briefly about Hollywood uh, playing a major role. Soft power, more generally, is a major factor in this equation. So our video game companies, the Arab film industry, plays an outsized outsize role in shaping perceptions and opinions. Uh, public broadcasters continue to play an important role, not only in the Arab world, but also in Europe. Um, and then opinion leaders and influencers, again, especially on social media, could be part of this effort to drive forward a more constructive environment. Uh, athletes, but also average citizens. Average citizens play a very important role in this, I think. We discussed briefly uh, risks, so the key risk again is that there may be a perception that this isn't an organic process. I think that's the single most important risk. That's why the role of UNESCO has to be that of, a, of a, 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 an organization that has the convening power to bring together all of the other stakeholders, more so than UNESCO itself operating a program. Um, and then finally, uh, we discussed that we need to look at ways of uh, creating constructive debate more so than dialogue as a paradigm, debates that are really solution-oriented that, that can help us uh, go forward together. Thank you very much.